Hello friends, my name is Lee, and I share videos on photography as an art and as a lifestyle. In today's video, we're talking about mid-range zoom lenses. Is this a controversial subject? Perhaps. Photographers can get pretty territorial about their favorite pieces of gear, and the mid-range zoom is a workhorse lens that is probably in most of our bags. And a lot of folks use it the most out of any of their lenses because it is so versatile. But the question is, do you go for the classic 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8, some variation of that, maybe a 24 to 105 f4 lens? Maybe you have both in your collection. Raymond and I did an experiment with a couple of mid-range zoom lenses, and I will share the results with you while also discussing our thoughts. The experiment was, mid-range zoom lenses. Is more range better or is a wider aperture better? I'll explain in a moment, but first, a big thank you to Lumix who is sponsoring this video. Raymond and I together have two Lumix S5 II bodies. One is filming me right now. <laughs> it's rare for us to want two of the same body, but we both love the Elmount Alliance lens options and the S5 II, it's simply a fantastic all around full frame camera body for a great price. Our Lumix collection was perfect to use for this particular project because we do have the two S5-2s which function identically. So our comparison is apples to apples. And Lumix was kind enough to lend us their 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 and their 24 to 105 f4 lenses. And that meant that Raymond and I could each use an S5-2 with either the 24 to 70 or the 24 to 105. We could go on an outing together and then compare notes and results. So that's what we did. Now, even if you use a different brand of camera, stay with me. The information that I discussed today about choosing your mid-range zoom really applies to any camera brand that you are looking at. The first question we had to answer was, who uses which lens? <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to arm wrestle Raymond for the 24 to 105, but conveniently, he wanted to use the 24 to 70. From a business perspective, I was an event photographer for many years, often working in low light. Give me an f2.8 continuous aperture, mid-range 24 to 70 lens, and I'll get the shots. We departed our home in the dark for a sunrise hike in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, equipped with our respective setups. Did we end up wanting to swap lenses? Did we like what we chose? And which was better? Let's find out. <laughs> As I talk through this, I will share photos and I will add which lens was used at the bottom of the screen. For a little background on these lenses, the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens is ubiquitous in what most people think of as a pro photographer's kit. Most camera brands have an upper tier of lenses that are more robust, usually better weather sealed, the optics are generally higher quality, the lenses usually open up to wider apertures f2.8, sometimes wider, and they certainly have the higher price tag to go along with those things. The 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 is very often in that upper tier. Lumix calls this tier pro, and their 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 is solidly in that category. That being said, many brands offer a 24 to 105 millimeter f4 lens, or something close to that. And these lenses offer more reach, but their widest aperture is f4 throughout the zoom range. In the past, these lenses were not typically in that upper tier of lenses and may not have been as sharp as those upper tier lenses. However, times have changed. While the 24 to 105 may not be in the upper tier, this Lumix 24 to 105 does not have that pro designation, but especially looking at these newer lenses designed for mirrorless systems, the image quality is still stellar and the lens can absolutely be used professionally. Plus, in the case of the 24 to 105, you also gain optical stabilization or OIS and macro capability. And it is also well weather sealed. Let's talk image quality. Like I just alluded to, there probably isn't much of a difference when we're talking about newer lenses, in particular lenses made for mirrorless bodies. But we would see more of a difference when talking about older lenses. In those cases, especially, theoretically, an f2.8 lens stopped down to f4 
would be sharper at f4 than an f4 lens. But like I said, we just don't see that on new lenses. Let me show you. Let's look at a side-by-side -side here. Raymond and I were standing in slightly different spots and composed a little bit differently, but those differences are immaterial. These were captured wide open on each lens, and I mean, come on, can you tell a difference? <laughs> I cannot. I sat at my computer wearing my glasses, zooming in, zooming out, zooming in, zooming out on both of these images, trying to pinpoint variations in image quality, and I just couldn't tell a difference. Is that going to be the case for every brand? No. But with Lumix lenses, I can say that from an image quality standpoint, I'm seeing the same excellent level of quality delivered by each lens. For whatever brand that you are looking at, the difference in image quality between the two lenses, if there is any, may help you make the difference of which one to purchase. While we're discussing image quality, Raymond and I both used the handheld high resolution mode for a few photos, and we were discussing just how cool this feature is. The S5 II has 24.2 effective megapixels, but using this high resolution option in handheld mode, you are presented with a 96 megapixel image. I know this video isn't really about the S5 II, but I wanted to mention it here for a couple of reasons. If you are zooming in on your image or cropping it because you have so many pixels <laughs> to play with, you definitely need to consider your lens. You want a lens that can stand up to that kind of scrutiny. These two certainly can, but not all lenses have that capability. One other thing to keep in mind is how you are using the high resolution mode and how you plan to utilize the images. Especially when photographing a landscape like we were, you have to take into account the actual atmosphere that will reduce the clarity of the view as it gets further away. It doesn't matter what lens or what camera you're using, you won't be able to zoom way in on a mountain that is miles away and see the individual leaves on an aspen tree. Another thing you should think about when shopping for your mid-range zoom is your purpose. As Raymond mentioned earlier, when shooting a lot of weddings and other events, the f2.8 mid-range zoom is king for a couple of reasons. The ability to shoot at f2.8 gives you better depth of field separation with the background, particularly when shooting portraits. You don't always have a lot of space to back up and then zoom in for a more shallow depth of field, so the wider aperture is key. Also, a lot of events are held in spaces that are dim, so f2.8 is allowing you to shoot closer to your base ISO compared to if you were shooting an f4 lens or another narrower aperture. Even with newer cameras like the S5 II, which does have wonderful high ISO performance, the closer that you can shoot to your base ISO, the cleaner your images will look overall. Is that the decision-making factor for you? Maybe so. One of the hidden benefits of an f2.8 lens is even an advantage when you're not shooting at f2.8. When you're walking around with your S5 II or most other mirrorless cameras, no matter which aperture that you are set for, the camera is at f2.8 when you are focusing and composing. With more light hitting the sensor and the focusing mechanisms, you will get slightly faster and more responsive autofocus than with a lens that has a narrower base aperture. And speaking of speed, finally, for sports and other fast action moments, more light at f2.8 allows you to use faster shutter speeds. Getting one more stop of light at f2.8 versus f4, all other things being the same, gives you 1 500th shutter speed rather than 1 250th. For sports, moving birds, and even chasing kids around, that can make a difference when it comes to freezing motion. I've now talked about a few reasons why you may want the f2.8 lens, but let's talk about the 24 to 105 f4. It's not too shabby. As I said, it's just one stop slower than f2.8, and with Lumix's clean images at all reasonable ISO settings, it's really not a compromise, at least not in the majority of situations. The days when it was, 
compromise and tragedy when you set ISO 800 compared to ISO 400? Thankfully, are long over. <laughs> and remember, along with F4 aperture, the 24 to 105 gives you more range on the long end. If mild telephoto is in the cards for you, 105 millimeters gets you that much closer than 70 millimeters. Does that take you from looking at the 24 to 70 to looking at the 24 to 105? This 24 to 105 is also a macro lens, expanding the flexibility of the lens and your own flexibility to capture the tiny world around you. When I am out on a hike, like we were in Sedona, I really like having flexibility. Wide landscapes, telephoto landscapes, the nature around me. You don't have to feel limited by minimum focusing distance or have to do substantial cropping to simulate macro. You can get right up close, including at 105 millimeters. For me, that's macro nature photography, and it helps me accomplish my own personal photography goals, which are to tell the full story of a place, to give the viewer a feel and an appreciation of the environment, both big and small. Another note is that this 24 to 105 has optical stabilization, which is super helpful at longer focal lengths, or if you're a little bit shaky. In the case of using this with the S5 II, which also has in-body image stabilization, you're freed up to use slower shutter speeds to keep your ISO sensitivity lower. And it's great for video. One more thing to consider, size and weight. Does that matter to you? It often does to me. This Sedona hike up Doe Mountain was tough. The 24 to 105 is slightly smaller and lighter weight than the 24 to 70. Those inches and ounces can make a big difference in your comfort level if you are carrying the camera around all day. Okay, the question today is, which lens is better? You probably already know my answer. No one lens is inherently better than any other, particularly in the L-Mount Alliance and Lumix's lens lineup. It all depends on your preferences and your intentions. The key is to know what the capabilities mean and to think about what you want and what you expect. For me, I do enjoy using a 24 to 70 f 2.8 for many reasons, but for this particular outing, I was much more happy with the 24 to 105 f 4. I didn't once want to swap lenses with Raymond. If I had both available for any of my random photography outings, I would choose the 24 to 105 unless I really had a solid need for the wider aperture of the 24 to 70. Raymond is sticking to his guns though, and he has told me that as soon as I'm done filming this, he has plans for the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. I don't know what they are. And now I ask all of you, do you own a mid-range zoom? What is it? Why did you choose it? Is it a wide aperture f 2.8 lens that's built like a tank? Is it an f4 lens with lighter weight and potentially more range? Is it a variable aperture lens? And whether you have any or all of those, is there one that you're shopping for now? Let us know down in the comments. Thank you again to Lumix for sponsoring this project and for the loaner lenses. I will certainly link to everything that we used in the description of this video. And thank you for watching.